We are in week number two, family. Week number two of our series for this month called Glory Days. Come on, somebody shout Glory Days. Come on, this is where we are entering back into his glory. His word teaches us this, family. His word teaches us that we move from glory to glory. And I'm just here to remind you that it's getting ready to get better. Because anytime that we step into his presence, things cannot stay the same, my friend. And God is getting ready to take your life from glory to glory. Come on, come on. God is getting ready. Come on, proclaim that over your life right now. God is getting ready to take my mind. Come on, somebody, talk back to me. My mind is going from glory to glory. Come on, my health is going from what? Glory to glory. Come on, my relationships are going from glory to glory. God never just keeps us in a season. He always shifts us into something better. And we believe this for you, family, as we begin to travel through the tabernacle, that God is getting ready to show us some things in the midst of worship, and we're getting ready to enter in. If you missed last week, God told us to climb higher this year. And when you climb this mountain, come on, Moses, I'm getting ready to show you something. I'm getting ready to download something into your spirit, my God, that's getting ready to change your life and getting ready to change generations in your life. Do you believe that today, my family? Come on, that God can give you a revelation that generations are getting ready to get restored and blessed because somebody, come on, somebody decided to go up a little bit higher with them. That somebody decided not to play it safe with God. That somebody decided to say, you know what, God, I'm going to trust you at a higher elevation. I'm ready to trust you out in the deep. Come on. So today we're getting ready to, we spent some time in the outer court in the tabernacle. But God said this week, come on. He said, Anthony, tell him it's time to enter in. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to enter in. Come on, we're getting ready to go in the inner court. And if you have your Bibles, turn to Exodus 20, Exodus 25. And it reads this family in chapter 8. This is when, this is when God told Moses to come up a little bit higher. And it reads this family, it reads this, it says, how the people, how the people of Israel build me a holy sanctuary so I can live among them. You must build this tabernacle and its furnishing exactly according to the pattern I will show you. Come on. God tells Moses, this family, to, to, to go get the furniture, Pastor Chris. To, to go get the furniture because I'm ready to move in. I'm ready to dwell with you. I'm ready to hang out with you, Amber. God is saying, go prepare a place so we can commune together. That God is always looking to hang out with you, Elvis. That God is always looking to go with you. But he says, go get the furniture. If I can title this message today, family, just look at your neighbor and say, it's moving day. Turn to your other neighbor and say, it's moving day. Oh, it's moving day. Come on, come on. It's moving day. God is getting ready to move into your life like he has never moved into your life before. God is saying, prepare a place for me because I'm moving in. I need some more room to dwell there. I need some more room in your mind. I need some more room in your finances. I don't know who I'm getting ready to preach a word to, but I can feel the anunction in here. I can feel the glory of God. And God is saying, you would just prepare a place for me and allow me to move in. I'm telling you right now, I'm getting ready to evict some things. I'm getting ready to kick depression out. I'm getting ready to kick anxiety out. If you would just prepare a place for me, come on somebody, it's moving day. So God, we thank you for your word. We ask that you preach a mighty word to us today, that you will set us in such a course in this year that's getting ready to blow our minds. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout amen. Amen, amen. You can have your seats, family. God tells Moses' family to go make a place so I can hang out with you. Since, since you are having trouble coming up, I will come to you. God begins to release some vision to, to, to Moses here because God is always looking to hang out with you. 
Matter of fact, when God created Adam and Eve, and he created a God and so that God can dwell with us. Come on. And then we can even see right here in the tabernacle that we're getting ready to discover a little bit more that God created the tabernacles actually called this the meeting place. That God has a desire even from the beginning to always hang out with you. That his plan is always to commune with you even though we don't deserve it, my friend. God still wants to hang out with you. Even when we walk in sin, God still wants to hang out with you. Can we keep it a little bit real on this Sunday morning? Even when we walk in mistakes, it doesn't matter what your life has been through. God always has a plan to commune and hang with you and sit with you. And God is telling Moses here, create a place so we can hang. I just wonder what our life will look like, Pastor Brenda, if we hang out with God a little bit more. I just wonder what your life is getting ready to look like in this season of your life when we begin to carve out some time. Come on, family, and say, God, come and hang out with me. Come and meet me at 4 a.m. in the morning, at 5 a.m. in the morning. I'm ready to wake up early. I'm ready to live a Matthew 6.33 type of life. I'm ready to seek you, God. And I know all these other things are getting ready to be added unto me. But is there anybody here with me? I don't want the other thing if I don't have you first. So he says this. He says, uh, go create a place so that we can hang. Can put up the tabernacle picture there for me, family. Look at this tabernacle because this is moving day. And as last week, we begin to, we begin to see the entrance curtain. And we see that the entrance curtain is wide. And last week, we talked about the brazen altar. And we talked about the brazen laver, laver. And we talked about, but now, come on, somebody, it's time to enter in. It's time to not sit out just in the outer court. And God is saying, there's too many of my people who just stay in the outer court. And God is saying, no, this year it's time to come back in. It's time to go in inside the court. It's time to commune with me. It's time to worship with me. I don't want to play out in the yard. I actually want to sit in his presence. If we're going to wake up early in the morning and come here at 1030, come on. I don't want to play church. I actually want to be the church. Come on. If we're going to drive through traffic, come on in 30 degree weather. Yes, for our online family, it's cold here today. And if you're going to wake up, I don't want to play with this thing. No, God, I really want you this year. God, I want your garment. I want to grab hold of you. I want more for you. I said it last week. I don't want to live with just breadcrumbs from God. No, I want the full entree. And God is saying, no longer will you just stay in the outer court, Anthony. It's time to travel into the inner court. And I believe that's a word for you today, my friend. Come on. I believe God is speaking with you. That's why he's pushing you. And that's why there's some fire in your life. Because God is trying to get your attention to move into the inner place. Because when we move inside of there, there's some furniture that God wants us to sit at. As we begin to look at the tabernacle, this is moving day. See, there's something powerful about the tabernacle. There's something powerful about this place. It, it reminds me of Psalms 91. It reminds me of Psalms 91, Pastor Brennan. This says, he who dwells in the secret place. And God is saying, it's time to come back to my secret place. See, there's power in the secret place. There's the secret places where you be restored. Come on. The secret place is where you get a vision from God like you have never gotten a vision before. It's in the secret place, and God is saying this, Anthony, there's too many places you love to travel, but I need you to travel back to my secret place. Am I preaching to somebody today? We want to be invited to so many rooms, but God is saying the only invitation you need right now is to travel into my room, travel into my secret place, return to my secret place where you're getting ready to get restored, where you're getting ready to get delivered. If there's anybody in here that's looking to be healed in a miraculous way, God is saying, meet me in the secret place. See, this is Psalms 91. It's the secret place that God is telling us to enter into. It's in the secret place, my friend, where God doesn't condemn you. He cleans you. There's many of us that need to be cleansed today. 
And this is what we learned even last, last week. God is saying, I'm cleaning my people. I'm cleaning my people so that they can move even, they can move further in. And, and I wonder what your secret place looks like. Last week we said, carve out some time. Make a plan. M- make a prayer. I, I wonder what your secret place looks like for this season of your life. Because we want more vision, but we won't visit the secret place. Mm. We, we want to be delivered, but God is saying, no, no, come in my secret place. And it's in my secret place where I'm getting ready to show you something. Moses, come up a little bit higher. Travel up this mountain that's getting ready to make you tired. But by the time you get to the top, you're going to sit in my Shekinah glory. By the time you make it to the top, I'm going to show it's going to be worth your weight. By the time you make it to the top, I'm getting ready to release some revelation over your life that's getting ready to bless you and your family. Am I preaching to somebody's life right now? God is saying, whoa, when you make it to that place, things cannot stay the same. I believe God is calling his people back to the secret place. Am I preaching to somebody in here today? And one of the first things that God shows us, because the tabernacle is a secret place, it's where God hung and dwelt with them. And the first piece of furniture that I want to introduce you to today, my friend, as we travel through the tabernacle together, as God shows us his glory, it's, it's the table of showbread. God shows them, showed them the table of showbread. And God shows them the table of showbread. This is, this is the bread of his presence. As you can see, the 12 loaves that's right there, it, it represents the 12 tribes. And the beautiful thing about this family, this, this is always supposed to be bread on the table. That every time the priest would go in, Pastor Brenda, there was always bread on the table. It, it doesn't matter what season they were in. It doesn't matter that they were out in the wilderness. They never experienced a moment with no bread on the table. Come on. I- I'm preaching to you right now because it doesn't matter what season you may be in right now. But when you enter into this place, there's always bread on your table. It's always going to be bread on your table. This is a, this is a Psalms 23 verse 5. Can I give it to you this way? Come on. It says, you prepare a table. Come on before me in the presence of my enemies. Even out in the wilderness, my God, surrounded by enemies, every time the priest would walk in, there was always bread to commune with God. I believe that whatever season that you may be in right now, when you come sit at this table, God is getting ready to feed you. I I speak to your table today. I speak that you will sit at the table of joy. I speak that you will sit at the table of peace. I'm I'm preaching in your life right now. Come on. I speak because even last year, you found yourself sitting at the wrong table. You found yourself waiting for invitations to sit at a table, and they won't invite you. They won't let you in. But I'm telling you right now, there's a table that's prepared for you right in the middle of your enemies. And God is saying, I dare you to come sit with me. I dare you to come sit with me because they won't invite you but I got a chair for you come and sit with me and commune with me right in the midst of the enemies right in the wilderness where they had to wait for God to feed them. Who I, I, I'm speaking to somebody right now because you're in the middle of a wilderness right now and God is saying, you don't know how you're going to eat. You don't know how your health is going to make it. You don't know how your business is going to make it. And God is saying, step into my place. Come on. There's always bread on my table. No matter what season you are in today, my friend, God always knows how to feed you. No matter what season that looks like it's getting ready to end, when you step into his table, God is always looking to feed you. And it says in verse 6, it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Come on. All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's always bread in his house. There's always bread in his house. 
Matter of fact, Jesus said it this way. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly, Heavenly Father. Jesus was born where? In Bethlehem. Come on, somebody. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, which means the house of bread. Matter of fact, Jesus said it this way in the gospel. He said, I am the bread. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I am the bread born in Bethlehem, and I am the bread of life. And he who comes to me shall never hunger. God, prepare a table right in the middle of my night terrors. Whew. God, God, prepare a table right in the middle of my co-workers. Come on, somebody. Prepare a table right in the middle of a job interview. Prepare a table right in the middle when the doctors are getting ready to, to give me a report and I don't know if I'm going to agree with it. Prepare a table for me and my wife in the middle of our marriage for my career. Who am I preaching to right now? God, can you prepare a table so that I can eat at? God, I don't want to eat out, out of the wrong table this year. I only want your bread. I only want your bread for me. I want to feast off of your bread. So I declare to you today, my friend, eat. This is an eating season. Come on. Feast on his word like you have never feast before. God, wake us up in the morning so that we can seek you first, that we won't grab our phones, that we won't run the social media, that we won't worry about a work email. I don't know who I'm speaking to right now. The first thing you do when you wake up, you grab your phone. God is saying, no, wake up with me on your mind. Feast on me and watch what I'm getting ready to do. God is saying, I'm getting ready to blow your mind. I'm getting ready to give you some vision, but I need you to eat because you keep eating the wrong things and I got to keep cleaning you. I got to keep detoxing you. And God is saying, no, eat at my table. Come have breakfast with me. Step into that secret place. Step into that, step into that place, my God. Yeah, yeah. Step into that place where you get triggered from wrong things. Yeah, come on. Step into that place when you get around certain people and they frustrate you. Come on. I want to preach it real today. Is that okay, family? Can I preach it right where you are? Because there are things in your life that continues to try to distract you. But God is saying you need the strength from my bread to handle the warfare that's old, that's, that you're under attack. And we keep running to the wrong supplements. We keep running to the wrong sources. We keep running to the wrong people, waiting for them to feed us in a miraculous way. And God is saying, no, it's going to be at my table that I'm going to feed you this year. It's going to be at my table where I'm going to give the vision for your life. It's at my table where I'm going to show you, my friend, that the vision and the strategy and a plan and a purpose for your business. It's at my, it's at my table because God wants to feed you, but he... God doesn't just stop there in the tabernacle because we, we see that the priest sees it. I want you to walk with me. We're walking. We're going somewhere. Walk the scriptures with me. Because not only did they have the bread in the house, they also had the light. They also had the golden lampstand. Kill it up on the screen for our family. See, this is the next piece of furniture that we see here. Is this Okay. It, it, it was the light inside the holy place. I hope I'm teaching it right. I hope I'm speaking to your life right now. This is the golden lampstand. Stand. This is where the priest filled the lampstand regular with pure oil in order to keep the fire burning. So every time they enter into the holy place, the fire was always burning on the golden lampstand. But I want you to catch the picture because when I was studying, I said, wow, God, there's no windows inside of here. So in order for the priest to see where they were going, they needed a golden lampstand to be burning. In order for the golden lampstand to be burning, they had to use the very oil that God instructed them to, be, to use. And I'm preaching to you right now. In order for you to keep burning for the things of God, you need his oil. Woo! You need his anointing. You need his grace. And, and if you feel like you're in a season right now where you're getting ready to burn out, where you feel like you're in a season right now where you're getting See, here's the thing. Darkness is really not a thing. It's actually the absence of something else. Darkness is actually, it has no substance. It only increases when something else decreases. Walk with me, because, because in order to have darkness, light must not exist or light must flee. See, here's the thing. I don't have to get increase darkness. All I have to do is actually say light increase. And when we turn 
soon as we turn the light in here, what did doctors begin to do? Flee. And once they get all the other lights up, up and running in here, what doctors going to do? Flee. And God is saying, I just need you to shine my light. You are walking in darkness right now in Merck, I need you to shine my light. If you are walking in darkness in your business, all you got to do is shine your light. You spend it way too long having conversation with a lot. He wanted his life to be shined. No, they spoke and communed with one another. It said, they said, we came into agreement and let there be light. I'm telling you right now, for your life, just release the light. Come on, somebody. Darkness has to flee. The enemy has to flee when you begin to open up your mouth and shine right today. I speak to the light that's inside. I speak to the gift that's inside. I speak to the calling that's inside.
strategy, I want your strategy. Yes. I don't want my idea, I want your idea. I, I don't want my vision, I want your vision, God. Because your vision leads me in the right direction. And the last one is this. The last one is this. Come on, we, we went to the table of showbread. We went to the golden lampstand. So not only did it have bread in this place, not only did it have lights in this place, but also they released a smell in this place. They released a smell. And in other words, in other words, they released such a beautiful aroma to God. They released such a beautiful aroma. Somebody just tell me, you good? They released such a beautiful aroma to God. And here's the beautiful thing. Look at the altar of an incense. This is the place before the tabernacle of curtain. This is where the fire was burning. And in order to release a sweet aroma, whoo, watch this family. They needed a fire. And, and can you imagine this? I, I'm, I'm speaking to your life right now. Because somehow, in some way, God can use fire to release our aroma. And God can use the fire in your life. I want to speak to the fire in your life right now. Because fire will make you pray. Yeah. Fire will create an intercessor inside of you. Fire will have you down on your knees calling on the Lord like you have never called on him before. Fire will, you will call on Jesus. You didn't even know you know how to pray in time. And that fire came in your life. And next, you just went, you went to rolling. Woo, where did that come from, God? I'm telling you, fire will have you calling on the name of the Lord. Fire will create a prayer lifestyle inside of you. Fire will have you up at 4 a.m. reading, reading revelations. You don't even know how you got there. I'm just de desperate for anything that you would get. Fire will push something out of you. See, the beautiful thing about fire family. See, see, fire, and, and when they were in there, I'm going to move quick. When they were in there, it got smoky. That's what God showed me. It, it got smoky. It was smoke, just smoke everywhere because they were it's an incense, smoke just going up. And, and then it got so smoky from the altar, but also God's glory was coming. So the, his, his fire, the fire from the smoke and also the glory from God began to, it began to co combine. Where you didn't, even, you didn't know which one was which. And here's what God is saying. God can turn your smoky situation into a glory situation. So if you're, if you're going through a season right now, yeah, and it's getting real smoky, yeah. <laughs> it's real smoky in my job. It's real smoky in my mind. <laughs> it's real smoky in my business. And God is saying, lay it on the altar and watch what I do. Lay it on the altar and watch I turn your smoky situation into a glory situation. And people be saying, why are you still smiling when you're walking through that? That's not smoke, that's glory. Woo. That, that, why are your marriage still good? Why are you still, y'all gone through all that? That's not smoke. That's not fire. That's his glory. And I'm telling you right now, God is flipping your mindset. God is changing your perspective. God is saying, when you begin to see that my hand is in the middle of all the pain, in the middle of all the fire, that fire is not here to consume you. That fire is here to mold you. Just like gold got to go through some fire so it can be molded into the very image that it's supposed to be. God will send some fire into your life to mold you, to create you, and push you into his very design. That's not smoke. That's God's glory in your life. His glory is moving in your life. And God is saying, take a second look. Take a second look because here's what prayer is. Prayer is in, the prayer, in this room. It's where our faith meets God's glory. When we step into that room, step into that arena, it's, it's when faith meets God's glory. It's moving day, family. Stand to your feet. It's moving day. It's moving day. It's time to move into the secret place with God. It's time to move into the secret place. Because in this place, you have the bread. 
in this place you have the light. In this place you have the smell. I wonder what you smell like in this season. Release your voice. Release your praise. Release your prayer. I wonder what you smell like in this season. And here's the powerful thing. I'm going to add this and I'm getting ready to close. Put, put the Israelites encampment picture up there. Wow, yeah. Thank you, God. When they were in the wilderness, watch that. I love that God told them not to put the tabernacle on the outside of the camp, but he actually told them to put it in the inside. And as you can see, there is only some of them because it's, this is millions of people, and, and all of the tribes were around the tabernacle. And God is saying that he told them to put them, put me at the center because I want to be at the center of your heart. And I just wonder what your life will look like this year where we actually put God back where he's supposed to be. Where we actually put God back in the center of our life. Back in the center of our minds. Back in the center of our thoughts that God, you supposed to be in the middle and I'm entering back so I can have the very strength to put you back where you're supposed to be. There's other people that's been in your position, but I want to put you back where you're supposed to be. So here's what I'm praying against. I'm praying against distractions for you this year. There's been things distracting you, and now you're off the spot. There's things that, that when fear comes into your life, it's getting you off your mark. It's getting you off your spot. And, get, and that's what the enemy wants to do. The enemy doesn't want you to worship because if you don't worship, then you won't get his bread. If you don't worship, you won't be able to turn on the light. If you don't worship, you won't be able to release a, release a, a sweet savor unto God. And that's why the enemy is trying to confuse your worship. That's why the enemy is he's shutting down power and not trying to get this message, message online. But I'm telling you right now, enemy, you ain't going to stop me. You ain't going to stop this house. We're going to keep releasing this word. I go on Instagram live right now. I walk out into the middle of the street because we're going to worship in this place. Because when you worship, you got the bread of God. When you worship, you turn on a light. When you worship, God hears your prayers. So this will be a house <laughs> where we keep him back at the center. And we will surround his glory. Yeah, yeah. Your house will be a house where it surrounds his glory. Your, your house will be a house where your finances are surrounded by his glory. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some things that you're writing on your vision board right now. It's going to be surrounded by his glory. We won't allow worry or guilt to pull us away. So can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Heavenly Father, I pray that you would keep us, help us keep Jesus at the center of our hearts, the center of our thoughts, our actions, and desires. Lord, forgive us for the times when we allow worldly distractions to take over, to take precedence, over our relationship with you. Help us prioritize you above all else and to seek your will in every aspect of our lives. God, we pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we will be sensitive to your leadings and your promptings. We pray all of this in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Because we believe that it's moving day. It's moving day. Move into our hearts. Move into our minds. Move into our lives. We believe all of this in Jesus Christ. Come on, family. You believe that? Put your hands together.